This is the Bonington Experience. Well, I, I think caping is something really that every hunter ought to know how to do now. I mean, here in the United States, the simple answer is you just skin the deer down to the head, take the head off, take it to the taxidermist, and he's got the knives and the expertise and can do it very quickly. But there, there's so many times when that just doesn't work. You're too far from town, it's too warm, you need to get it in a cooler. There, there's lots of reasons, but sooner or later, especially if you guys go into the outfitting and guiding business, there's gonna be times when a guy's gonna look at you and say, are you gonna cape that for me? Say, uh, yeah. Um, the easiest thing to do is, is to get the skin down and then you can, you can actually work on, work on the head more easily once it's taken off. But you start by making what we call a Y cut. And it goes from the base of this antler and the base of this antler and meets about here. So it's basically a Y cut. And then you take a sharp knife and you just go right up the spine. And you want to leave a taxidermist, this was obviously not field dress to be mounted. Uh, when you're field dressing an animal that somebody might want mounted, you never open the skin further than uh, uh, about two thirds down. And then you take this cut and you just make a circular cut around the animal. And then you can start to skin it just like you'd skin anything else. Skinning it uh, down, basically down to the neck right behind the skull and then you can take the skull off and get it on a table and work with it. The next step to take it uh, off the skull and around the ears and, and for me this is the hardest part. You just kind of work it just a little bit at a time. A uh, screwdriver is a very useful tool. You can use a screwdriver to kind of push it down. You don't want a screwdriver that's too sharp. Now as you do that you're going to reach the base of the ear. You actually want to take the base of the ear off fairly close to the skull, leaving quite a bit of ear below the skin. Uh, if you're in refrigerate, if you're near refrigeration, once you're done, you can probably freeze it with the ear just like that. But absent refrigeration, if you're going to have to salt the skin to dry it, you actually need to turn the ear inside out. And that's probably the touchiest part of it at all because it's very, very paper thin up here and it's really easy to punch through. Good news, taxidermists can fix almost anything. Okay, and you just kind of, you keep it loose enough so that you can get a flap going. And you just sort of work your way slowly, slowly around the ear. You can do it all together with a knife. A lot of guys use scalpels Scalpels with uh, disposable interchangeable blades are really, really useful tools for this. But I find that if I have a, an instrument that's just too sharp and unfamiliar, I, I start to make mistakes. You're just gonna kind of take your knife and go right underneath the burr of the antler and make a horizontal cut. And then you go in with, with a sharpened point or a screwdriver, and a lot of guys use the uh, use the handle of a of a kitchen spoon. Miraculously, I haven't made a mistake in the skin or cut myself. Okay, now at this point, where I've got it down to the eye, I usually quit there and go to the other side. Now, when you get to where you don't have any leverage, then you have to take the ear off, and again. You want to take it off closer to the skull than to the base of the ear because that way you'll have enough to work with if you actually need to turn the ears inside out. One thing I do recommend is that you uh, touch up your knife fairly frequently because when you make mistakes is when your knife gets dull and then you sharpen it and when you start over, that's, that's when you cut the skin or cut yourself. So, it's probably good, a good idea to touch up your knife frequently so that you have a fairly consistent sharpness. Everybody worries about the, the eyes, but, but getting, it, getting it out from around the antler for me is, is far, the, far the hardest part. You want to get down to the eye as tightly as you can 
without, without actually cutting anything. But you want to make sure you do it right. So you take your finger in the corner of the eye so that you have your finger there. And you're going to pull away. And you're basically going to take the, the inside of the eyelid with you as you go. And I'm pulling with this finger. And I'm cutting very gently, making small little cuts like that. Now, with deer, you have those glands around the eyes. And some African antelope have the same. Uh, a lot of animals have, have glands around the eyes. So that, that's hard. You, want, you need to get that gland out as intact as you can. So it's time to work on the other eye. None of this is difficult, it just takes time. Taking a bit too much flesh is vastly better than not enough. The only way to learn this is to do it, really. I mean, it's, it's all the same, every animal in the world that has horns or antlers. Uh, I would recommend that sometime you shoot a buck that you know you're not gonna mount, just take an hour and do it. And once you've done it once, then, then it becomes so much easier. But now we've got the eyes, and so we're gonna start on down and work it all down at the same time. When you go on an outfitted hunt, you're betting more than just your hard-earned cash. You're betting your vacation time, your safety, and your hunting dreams. You've gotta get it right. There's a lot of ways to find a good outfitter, but a simple way is to go on my website, craigboddington.com, and take a look at our Craig Boddington Endorsed Outfitter Program. Go on the website and you hook up directly with the outfitter. It's based on 40 years of hunting experience worldwide. My program's a group of outfitters that I believe in, and they believe in me. Hey, I know a good outfitter. Okay, now, there are also multiple ways to do this, but uh, what I like to do at this point, uh, because the last thing you want to do is mess up the lips and the nose. Go inside the mouth, top and bottom, and start to separate the skin from the jawbone. And it's okay to leave, to leave plenty of, uh, of gum. What's not okay is, is to cut through to the outside, so I'm just about to join the cuts that I made on the inside. There. The only thing remaining to separate then is, is the nose, and nothing really touchy about that, but it's important to know when to quit. And at some point, you're gonna run out of bone and you're into cartilage. Just like that, so that you're leaving a little bit of that cartilage with the, uh, with the cape. Duh, like that. There at this point, there are two ways to handle this. If, if you're not going to freeze it and you don't have a taxidermist handy, then what you really have to do is, is flesh it a little more thoroughly, uh, wash it to get the blood off of it and then salt, just plain old, just plain old salt. And what the salt does is the salt draws the moisture. And as it draws the moisture, it seals the hair follicles from the, from the inside to the outside. So you get it fleshed, salt it, let the salt pull the moisture, let it sit for half a day and then change the salt, put clean salt. You wanna rub it very, very carefully all around the skin. Make sure you get plenty up in the face because you've left some flesh there. Now the ears, again, if you're gonna freeze it, you can let somebody else handle this for you if you can get it to a taxidermist. But if you can't, then you actually need to turn the ears inside out. And you can actually take something like a screwdriver and just sort of push it gently. You wanna make very sure you don't push it through. The uh, taxidermist has what he calls a, a turning fork. The turning fork actually gets you in between and then it opens up that, opens up that ear. 